Hi everyone! Thank you for clicking on this video and joining me. Um, today I thought of showing you guys how I make my most popular baby lovey. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, please don't forget to like and subscribe. It helps my channel a lot. And uh, alright, come along! Here I pulled out uh, believe everything that we're gonna need to start the lobby so we will need two types of material so I'm gonna use this super super snuggly and soft fun material um, and this very cozy and soft uh, linky here we're gonna need scissors marking pen this is the cutout for the blanket so the exact size that we're gonna need. These are the little cutouts for the fawn, for the head and the face. We're gonna need some pins to pin the material. Uh, this will be the color of the, th this will be the thread and the color for the name that's gonna go on this side. We're gonna need a hoop, and this is what we're gonna use to hoop the material into here so we can use it um, on the embroidery machine. This is the stabilizer that you're gonna need to put in the hoop and then you put the material on it, but we'll, we'll go over that. And then here is another stabilizer or I don't know what you call it because the material is um, hairy. If you just embroider right on top of the material, the thread will get buried and you won't be able to see the name. Then you can put it right on top and the thread will get stuck on this and it won't get buried into the Hair on the material. So first what we're going to do is cut out our two fabrics for the blanket part. Okay, so now we have the two pieces we need for the blanket part. And next we're gonna cut out the fabric for the fawn's face. So we're gonna need more of this super soft, frou-frou-y material. So is frou-frou an actual word or did I just make it up? See all those things all over me that fly off of this material? I call it frou-frous. Let me know in the comments if that's an actual word or if it's just a word made up by me. <laughs> so this is the cutout for the fawn, for the head. So we're gonna need two pieces, one for the front and one for the back. And we are gonna embroider, using the embroider machine, the fawn's face. All right, so this is the two pieces for the head. And now we're gonna take out this one and cut out the uh, fabric for the face and the ears. So when working with that wonderful material, this thing is very handy um, to kind of keep these frufus under control. Otherwise, it gets really out of control. Now we have the two pieces for the head, one piece for the face, the two pieces for the blanket part. Now we will start embroidering. Okay, to embroider, we need the stabilizer to put in our hoops. So I'm gonna measure. Oh, I got the wrong hoops. Now that's the two pieces I need. Okay, so, so you will need a piece of stabilizer that's bigger than your hoop. So when you hope it, there is room. Let's cut this about here. That's for this one. So you 
take your inside hoop out, lay the stabilizer on. And this will be for the blanket part where we're gonna embroider the name. So I'm gonna hoop the stabilizer with the fabric, just like this, all the way at the bottom here, make it straight. There is a left and right um, marked on here, so you know that goes at the bottom. This one is for the font space, so we're not gonna hoop the material in, we're just gonna float it. But we will hoop the stabilizer. And it should be bouncy like a drum. Then you know it's tight enough and it will work perfectly. All right, let's go over to the embroidery machines. Okay, we're gonna set this one up first. This is where we're gonna make the fawn toy. Okay, so while that machine is embroidering the face, we're gonna start on this one for the name. So I'm gonna program the name in here and get it going. Here is where we're gonna use this um, wash away. There's a name for it, I don't remember. But anyway, so um, this is where we're gonna use it. So I already cut a piece out. Just place it right there over the furry part. We're gonna clip it in. Press it down so it doesn't move on us. Here is the light pink thread to match the bottom of the blanket part for the name. So we gotta thread it in because I had a white thread in there. And this has a little dandy threader, which I cannot, for the life of me, figure out how to use. So. Here we go, doing it the old fashioned way. Ta da! And here we go. There goes nothing. Cue the music. So this machine is one of the really old, considered really, really old embroidery machines, but it works. And it was my first baby, so I'm not about to get rid of it. Sentimental reasons. So as the stitches skip, it doesn't cut the thread for you. Where the other machine, my brand new baby, has uh, an automatic uh, scissors, so it cuts it for you, which is nice. So here, uh, we have to do it by hand. Now, we are gonna do the eyes and the nose. So for that one, we have to put in the black color thread. So they thread pretty much the same. Super easy. Follow the arrows. And this one is an old machine, but it has the best threader. I wish they had done it on the new one, on the new machine too. It's so super easy to use. I cannot figure out the other one. Okay, so now the face is embroidered, so we just have to cut out all the extra white that we don't need. Just trying to be really careful not to cut the material underneath and not to cut too close to where the stitching is. Otherwise, the whole thing will come apart. And now all it needs is 
the back of the head and we're done with the phone just like that So one of my biggest fears is um, as I'm holding down and watching the fabric and holding it down so it doesn't fold on me, that my finger is going to get stuck between the needle and the needle is going to go right through my nail. I've been doing this for so long and so far it hasn't happened, but every time that's where my mind goes, like, oh, watch your finger. Okay, so now the head is done and the embroidery on this machine is also done. So we can move on to the next step. So now I'm just going to pull this off. Pull as much of it as I can off. Also cut some of it out and then the rest. Once you wash the blanket, it will get washed away. This is a called tearaway stabilizer because it tears away very nicely. Ta -da. Cut these little strings off the skipped stitching. Again, here. Ooh, that's nice. Okay, when you're cutting it out, you have to be very careful because you kind of want to cut it into the nooks here, but you have to be careful you don't cut through the, through the thread or you will put a hole. Alright, so you're going to need these. So you can go in there, push a little bit of the fabric, so open it, push a little bit of the fabric in there, and then clamp it. Clamps, that's what they're called, surgical clamps. And then gently, once you have the material clamped, you pull, and ta-da, comes right up. Okay, now we're going to go in for the other ear, open it, push a little bit of the fabric in, clamp it and then flip it alrighty and then go like this push the cheeks out push the ears out and it's taking shape here we go here is our sweet little fawn that is gonna need some stuffing okay so now we will work on the blanket part so here is our two pieces. This is where we're gonna need the handy dandy pins. Okay, um, so one more tip. Um, this fabric, because it, it has those bumps, it's very stretchy. So if I pin it this way and put it in the sewing machine this way, because it's so stretchy, it will, it will stretch on me. And what will happen is 
it will start out nicely and then it's gonna end up like this. <laughs> um, so to avoid that predicament, um, what I have discovered is if I pin it on this side, because this fabric is also a little bit stretchy but not as bad as this one. And if I use the pins and instead of pinning the material this way, if I pin this way, it keeps the fabric from stretching on me so I don't end up with one corner here and one corner there as I'm sewing it on a sewing machine. So it's just a little trick I've learned. Okay, so now we have it all pinned. Um, here, I'm leaving a little space so I don't sew it, sew over it. And this is where we're gonna flip it inside out. All right, let's go over to the sewing machine. mistakes happen <laughs> um, so it turns out that this blanket calls for ribbons and I completely forgot so now I have to take it apart and add ribbons <sighs> all right here we go these are the ribbons that I forgot about <laughs> um, these are satin ribbons and I have this little dandy handy dandy thing here. It's actually a wood burning tool that works great on the ribbons. Because if you just cut the ribbons with scissors, they will fray. And we can't have that since this is for babies. So this little wood cutting tool, it gets very, very hot. So what happens is, here we go. Here's my measuring tool. So I cut the ribbons the same size and measure here. And then we just go and it melts the ribbon, but it doesn't burn the ribbon. Sealed the fringe so it won't come apart on you. And it looks nice and clean. Alrighty, so here we are. So I take these ribbons and some of them I will loop like this and some of them I'll just keep straight as I attach them to the blanket. And babies really like to play with these. And also the loop ones you can use to attach any plastic links if you want to the blanket or pacifiers. So, so here I looped this one and then this one I'm gonna keep straight. Okay, now that I have the ribbons pinned, um, I'm gonna put the other side on. And when we go sew it um, with the sewing machine, I, I like to go over it three times just to secure these ribbons. So no matter how much they're being tugged on, they don't come out. Okay, so I didn't wanna bore you again with me pinning it all over again. 
So, but it's all ready and now let's try this again. All right, now we're gonna take all the pins out and flip it and see how it looks. Sew the opening shut and then we'll do a top stitch. Here we go, all top stitch and ready. And here are the ribbons, all nice secure. I'm gonna take it over to the other table again and cut off all the extra uh, thread. Okay, so now I am folding it this way to find the center, mark it with the pin, and then this is where the head will be attached. Here are my little special friends <laughs> and I'm going to use those to kind of shape the face and the ears a little bit more now. Now that the head is stuffed, it's a little bit easier to cut it without cutting through threads that I don't want to cut through. where my pin is and line up the head with the pin and pull the pin out and attach the head there we go just gonna check make sure that it's pretty much where it's supposed to be it is and I'm gonna take it over to the sewing machine and attach the head Okay, so the neck is attached. I'm just gonna get rid of all these little pieces of thread. So there's just too much fabric here. I'm gonna cut some of this off. There we go. And using a zigzag on the machine here, I'm gonna attach the bottom. So I have this uh, little comb that I like to use and brush it out. So if there's any anything loose or any frou frous that are still not fully dislodged, I can use the comb to comb it out. Okay. 
Okay, for the um, bow, I'm using a thicker ribbon. I think this is an inch and a half. So one last step is to put a bow under the head. So voila, here's the finished product. Um, I hope you enjoyed watching me make these. Um, I have many different varieties on my Etsy shop. Uh, there's one that has flowers, embroidered flowers instead of a bow. Uh, the flowers can come in different colors. Um, I have a whole bunch of different fabrics, purples, greens, yellows. The names can be also custom. They also um, come in little buck forms. <laughs> so instead of the bow, I have little uh, antlers that I cut out and I can sew it into the head. Thank you so much for watching. Please uh, subscribe, hit the bell, and let me know in the comments um, what other videos you would like me to make. I look forward to seeing you guys all again next Saturday. Bye.